No Imogene, I see. Could she really be on to us already? A good question. But with her abilities and connections, the possibilities are too many to speculate on right now. We need to find her first, then address that issue afterward. Of course, Yuko would know. If Imogene's with the Syndicate, I can't just send you after her. You'll need to speak with Benjamin Bayou. We have to make sure he's aware of the situation. If we're lucky, he may even help us get to Imogene. Bayou owns the Sioka Syndicate. For you to walk in there without discussing it with him first could be seen as a violation of our business relationship. Good, because without it, this adds a complexity that we do not have time for. Head over to the Trade Tower and be discreet. Let Bayou know that you're there on Ryujin's behalf. He may ask for credits or even a favor just give him what he wants. Sounds lovely. Could we requisition a towel so we can wipe off all the slime after dealing with that repulsive man? <sighs> You're right. If he asks for anything, tell him I'll guarantee to support his fundraising proposal. You'll know what that means. Just be sure to bring her back here in one piece. If she's truly the Mole, she'll have a lot to answer to. If she resists or tries to run, we have no choice but to take it as an admission of guilt. I'm afraid you'll have to dispose of her. Dispose of her? As a valued member of your corporation, she at least deserves the opportunity to explain herself. Imogene may be a valued operative here, but that's what makes her equally dangerous. We're lucky enough to have her position now, but should she disappear, we may never have another chance. Don't tell me a corporation like Ryujin isn't prepared to track a rogue operative throughout the galaxy. Of course we're prepared, but the expenditure would be great. Our chances of finding her would only decrease with time. So elimination is the most efficient path. It's something I hope our mutual friend here will understand as well. Matters like these are handled within the Corporation. The information we're dealing with is too sensitive for law enforcement, and their security leaves much to be desired. It wouldn't be long before the information was either leaked to the press or sold to yet another competitor. I'm glad you're willing to give Imogene a chance to speak for herself. She deserves that much, at least. The risk of Imogene continuing to operate as a traitor is too high. If we don't dispose of her now, she could cause a great deal of harm to this company. She knows the consequences of betraying Ryujin, which makes her dangerous. If the situation does take a turn for the worst, I only ask that you perform a thorough search for any evidence she may have in her possession. I trust you won't let your past relationship cloud your judgment. Clean. Last thing I want is to charge you for a DP and A and B, D and E. Or... I 
don't recall sending for anyone. What do you want? No. I can always make time when it comes to an old friend. So, what would be the reason? I may consider Ryujin an ally, but Dalton especially knows I don't give anything blindly. As long as it doesn't involve the Syndicate members themselves... I'll tell you what. I'll make sure the Syndicate lets you in hassle-free. Provided you do a little something for me. And what mutual... I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. This is... All right. You talk a good game. And I suppose if we're looking at a mutually beneficial situation, there's no reason for me not to allow such a small favor. Check in with Ms. Moore at Frankie's. I'll send word along that you're to be expected, so she shouldn't give you any trouble. Fair warning, the Syndicate should let you search any common areas, but if anyone catches you snooping around private quarters, I'll just say... Be prepared for some hostilities. Buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. Head back to Bayou Plaza before the disciples get you. A gang. Worst gang there is. They'll stab you for kicks, taking bets on how long you squeal before you bleed out. And that's not a hyper whatchamacallit. They seriously did that. <laughs> Poor Ted. We gotta look out for each other, right? Us crate rats used to think the Ebside strikers were awful, with all the muggings and shakedowns, but now that they're on the ropes, <sighs> kinda wish they weren't just holed up in Madame Sauvage's. Streets are getting bad. Real bad. I mean, yeah, they'll rob you blind, but at least they let you live. They're bad news, but... Compared to disciples, positive angels. Well, you'll find them at Madame Sauvage's. They're always holding auditions, as they call it. Looking for new blood. So, for being so helpful, a chance for a donation. Come on, might be saving my life. What with the disciples and all? I have a heart. Hey, thanks. Look, I mean it. Go back to the plaza. Ain't nothing but shit and misery over here. My mother wanted me to be a doctor. If a neuro amp helps you get a better job, basically pays for it. Hope you're a paying customer. You lost, kiddo. Oh, so you're the one getting special treatment. Don't look like much to me. I've got one rule for you in there, so it shouldn't be hard to remember. Third floor is off limits. They catch you snooping around, and it's open season.
That's what I'd like to hear. For the record, I'm only granting you access because I have to. You'll find that young lady you're looking for holed up in a room almost straight ahead. Just remember to keep your eyes on the prize. The less you consider this an open house, the better. amount of firepower is a bit of overkill, wouldn't you say? I figured our paths would cross sooner or later. Not that I thought I was safe, but I never expected anyone to just slip by all the syndicate here. I had a feeling you'd be the one to come after me. You stay in this business long enough, you get enough favors and connections that can help you see anything coming. Nyx owed me a favor, and gave me the heads up. Yes, and no, but mostly no. Just hear me out, okay? I know this doesn't look good, but I had no choice. Ularu set me up, yes. I've been acting as a double agent, but because she ordered me to. The assignment was meant to deceive, not benefit. And Project Dominion is way above my pay grade. It'd be impossible for me to deliver it. At least, intentionally. Of course. But first you have to understand, she used me to play an unwitting part in this, so I'm the one that takes the fall. That's why I said it'd be impossible for me to intentionally pull this off. I'm not the one with motive here. First, I'm not about to reboot my life. Second, I'm not spending the rest of my life looking over my shoulder for the next field op they'd send after me. Look, I only know about Project Dominion because I wanted to know exactly what I was being accused of leaking. But that tech is dangerous. An internal neuroamp that can theoretically control other people? If the evidence points to me, it's because Ularu used it to set me up. What better way to frame someone than to take control of their mind and have them actually perform the actions? The existence of a device that can control a person's mind is terrifying. Imagine the horrors you could... Oh, never mind. I don't want to think about it. Because she knows I'm the most believable target. I'm the only one at Ryujin with the skills to even come close to being able to pull off a job like this. Power, of course. Corporations maintain their success by any means necessary, but... ...there are some measures Masako is reluctant to take. You may have noticed that none of your assignments directly involve murder. Masako reserves those actions only when it's absolutely necessary. Ularu sees this as a sign of weakness that needs to be dealt with. You want evidence? I've got it. Ularu has the skill to pull this off, but she's also been behind the desk for years now. I knew she'd miss something. This slate holds all the evidence against her. I just need you to deliver it to Dalton. It's the only way I can prove I'm innocent. Nix's contract limits his investigation to Ularu's computer and her network activity. I hacked into building security and was able to recover deleted records of her accessing the Project Dominion prototype. I guarantee the third-party company Dalton is using for his security directive Theta won't even notice it. I can't do that. The moment I step in that building, Dalton will lock me up and Ularu will be on high alert. You really are naive when it comes to corporate culture. 
Once I'm back at Ryujin, Ularu will be looking to tie up any loose ends. So I can stay here and deal with you, or I can go back and deal with her. Which is why I'm hoping you'll take this evidence to Dalton. Of course you do. Look, if you just bring this slate to Dalton, I'm sure he'll understand. But if I go with you, everything is ruined. It's your choice. Do you want the truth? Or do you just want to be employee of the month? I was hoping you would. I'm still going to lay low until I hear the coast is clear. As long as Ularu still thinks I'm on the run, she'll remain confident that her plan is working. And I know you don't hear it much around the office, but thanks. So Ularu is the actual culprit. That complicates things. We're going to have to proceed very carefully, or else Dalton might send someone after us. Besides, a bad place for you. Rubbish already. Well, look who's back. So tell me, what did you find out? Inside the Syndicate? That area's off limits, and I think we both know why. Imogene knew exactly what she was doing when she went there. Oh my. Imogene pointing the finger at Ularu. That would be a first. Ularu will want her head when she finds out. Those two have been a team ever since Imogene started here. And saying they had a student-teacher relationship is probably an understatement. For either one to betray what we all assumed they had, is more than a bit surprising. Of course she did. Imogene knows better than to make an accusation like that without being able to back it up. I can't wait to see how this unfolds. This situation is gonna give Dalton some serious anxiety. At least it sounds like Imogene has it under control. For now. A mole? No. Ularu's not about to work for another corporation. If she's betraying Ryujin, she's doing it under her own personal agenda. If I were you, I'd leave it up to Dalton. If there's even a chance that Ularu is betraying the company, he'll never find out if she knows she's under investigation. You and me both. Imogene and I may not always get along, but there's no one better at her job. Besides, I don't have the patience to build a relationship with someone new.
You're back. And Imogene? I suppose you suddenly... Of course. The project itself is... Hmm. Well, this evidence certainly complicates matters, if Imogene believes Ularu to be the true culprit. I hope she's willing to attest to this in person. Now, I need to undertake the laborious task of writing up a report to summarize all of this. In the meantime, Masako. Vina's the head of... She's the creator. Just take the elevator. You'll find Dr. Masako's been... I believe her plan. Once I've examined this evidence, and not a word about this. What can I help you with? Let's see what you've got. Okay. I've been waiting here for ages. Keep out of my way and I'll keep out of yours. I need that Rothesite if we want to complete the Neuroam. I'm just concerned the entire station was wiped out by... something. Don't worry, we'll figure it out and get that shipment back. Good, you're here. It's time to put a plan in motion to take full control of this situation with Infinity LTD. In due time, we don't know to what extent Infinity has taken the current NeuroAm schematics, so our top priority is completing our own. Let me introduce you to Vina Kalra, Head of Research and Development. She'll give you the initial details. Yes, details. You see, the internal NeuroAm is supposed to consist of two parts. The first part, the part Infinity stole, handles the manipulative effects. The second part is a shielding modification designed to protect the user against other neuroamp users. Well, we can't, but the shielding aspect was never officially a part of Project Dominion. It was an afterthought of how to safeguard our own people from being manipulated, so it was being researched separately as a mod. The research itself was in early stages too early for board approval, so only myself, Demarcus, and Masako know about it. Big time. We'd be the only ones unaffected. No one wants their greatest asset used against them. Once Vina can complete the internal neuroamp and shielding mod, the plan is to outfit you with both and have you infiltrate Infinity LTD. We can't risk the assignment until we know your mind has the necessary protection. I think implanting that device into your head is a mistake. But it's your choice, not mine. You're a Ryujin employee, and we need a job done. We've trusted you this far, so I feel it's safe to continue the trend. We expect our employees to do whatever it takes to ensure Ryujin's success. Consider this an opportunity, not a risk. Besides, you're in good hands with Vina. Good. I'm glad you see this as an opportunity. And I love a willing subject. Now it's just a matter of getting the key ingredient. The final kink in both designs was finding compatible materials to use for conductivity that the human body wouldn't reject. I've finally created the perfect alloy, but it requires a newly discovered refined element called Rothesite. Which is where I come in. We have a confidential contract with Consolidated Mining to gather, refine, and ship the Rothesite straight to us. Their last shipment is late, and neither we nor Consolidated Mining have had any communication with the Karanay Station. Correct. The updates have been regular up until now. 
Last we heard, the shipment was ahead of schedule. We need you to head out there, secure the shipment, and bring it back here so Vina can complete her prototype. And I want to know what happened. We need to take any safety measures to make sure this doesn't happen again. Unfortunately, yes, so be prepared. Extensive tests and research were done on the planet, so the chances that this is environmental are slim. And setting up a station like this is second nature for consolidated mining, with plenty of redundancies in place to handle mechanical failures. Good. Feel free to deal with any resistance however you see fit. The mining station is CM Station RC-1. It's on a moon called Karen A-3A in the Karen A system. The shipment should be in the research and control tower, but the outside doors are kept locked down. This keycard will let you enter the mines so you can access the tower from the inside. Good luck. We can't lose that shipment.
I don't know. A few trees here and some grass there, and this place might not look so awful. Laboratory. The original occupants of the place must have been interrupted during their research. Attention! Huh? Ah. 
they have something we can use. Hey, Captain. Saw your ship come in. Nice ride. This area's off limits. Yeah, I bet you do. I hear you. Well, that's... Thank you. 
Hard to argue with that. Fine, I'll issue you an access card. Infinity better get it together. Just not today. You can't be okay with this, though, right? You took an oath. I'd say this is a firm violation. Look, I got that shipment. Although, who knows what Faye expects me to do with it. But maybe approvals really are on the way. Hey, who let you in here? This is a restricted area. In that case, you'll want to speak to Dr. Lane. You better get that approval soon. Excuse me, but this is a restricted area. You need to leave. Uh, your timing could be better. A little warning next time? I'll just take a moment to check up on my patient. Get this crate into space. Never run into spacers? <laughs> Scumbags and scavengers. Got my eye on you. Hey there. Good to see you. Is that my beautiful shipment? You were right about this one, Masako. So I've heard. Now I shall excuse myself and get to work on finalizing this prototype. So, what did you learn about CM Station RC1? Lucas must be desperate if he hired them to collect the Rother site. Were there any survivors? Our station on Karen 3A and Consolidated Mining's contract were both confidential. We had no reason to believe they'd be under any threat. Of course, we had no reason to believe we had a mole, either. Corporate culture may have its ugly side, but that doesn't mean we've lost our humanity. Our moves are strategic and precise, as you should know. The moment we justify the slaughter of innocents is when we go from competitive to criminal. Good. I may not condone murder, but I refuse to have sympathy for indiscriminate killers like Ecliptic. Especially after massacring innocents working for us. Now, 
I also had a report that you were spotted at the clinic. I take it you traced the shipment there? Dr. Lane. Hmm. I believe Vina is familiar with his work, specializing in neurosurgery. Were you able to determine what he was doing at the clinic? Human trials? Without even completing his product? Oh, Lucas must be insane. To hell with corporations and CEOs and profit margins. People have died, and you aren't showing the least bit of remorse. Oh. I'll make sure Yuko's team extracts every bit of information they can from the clinic's database on this. Between hiring ecliptic and unauthorized human trials, we have enough to take Lucas down for good. And with the Rothesite secure, it's almost time for us to make our move. Not long, according to her. She and Demarcus have everything prepped and ready. I believe it's just a matter of creating the alloy and molding it according to her design. It certainly is. And it's also time to inform the rest of the board on the current situation. Head up to the executive floor and speak to Dalton. He has an update for you on the mole's identity. I've called a meeting and I expect you to attend. It's time to put the final plan in motion. Hang around too long. I re-evaluated all the evidence. It took every resource I had, but the final answer is clear. Ularu is the mole. I had a feeling Imogene wasn't responsible. <sighs> that poor woman. In due time. I'll be reaching out, but right now we need her to remain in hiding. Yes. You made the right call. I've briefed Masako and discussed her plans on handling this. While we both agree Ularu is guilty, we need irrefutable evidence before presenting this to the board. For now, we lead everyone to believe that Imogene was the mole, and the situation was dealt with. Must that poor woman's name be continuously dragged through the mud? These nonsensical decisions need to stop. Imogene is a resourceful woman. I have no doubt she's in a safe house of her own design. In fact, she probably sees this as a paid vacation. My guess is she's lounging on a couch somewhere, binging all those movies she hasn't had time to watch. Good. Keeping Ularo in the dark is the key to taking her down. Masako has tasked Ularu with writing the program to bring down Infinity LTD. We believe she'll take the chance to incriminate Masako within the program. So this could provide the evidence we're looking for. You will be tasked with the assignment to infiltrate Infinity. So before you go, I want you to bring that program to me. If I can't find hidden code on a single slate, I certainly deserve to be fired. Ularu is limited in what she can hide here. Plus, she'll have no reason to believe anyone will be looking in the first place. I can't imagine a more satisfying ending. Now, let's attend a meeting.
We called you all together to discuss a recent security breach. We discovered a mole within the company who leaked vital information about Project Dominion to Infinity LTD. You've got to be kidding me. Just don't tell me it's Vina. I think we've all noticed she's not here. Before you speculate any further, no, it's not Vina. The guilty party is Imogene Salzo, much to my disappointment. Our operative here obtained the evidence to confirm it. Dalton, how does something like this happen? Imogene is highly trained. Ularu can even speak to that. We demand the best. So that's the threat we deal with. I may have well-trained operatives, but security is your responsibility, Dalton. This is a huge failing on your part. I accept the responsibility, but let's not forget. The mole has already been exposed and dealt with. Well, of course. Thanks to another of my operatives. I know you're not insinuating that this is my fault. Imogene's been dealt with, so bickering is pointless. All I care about is reacquiring our property and what this might be costing us financially. Vina is completing the internal neuroamp prototype as we speak. Our operative will receive the implant, infiltrate Infinity LTD, and obtain any and all research. I have it on good authority, the experimentations they've done to replicate the missing pieces of our work have resulted in fatalities. And the public often gets what it wants. If I may make a suggestion, we should give this evidence to David at SSNN. It's the best neutral method of releasing this information to the general public. That'd make my job easier. David it is, then. Yes, Echo. The internal neuroamp is ready if you want to send down the candidate. I hope you're ready for this. And that's precisely why I know we can count on you. Vina will be waiting for you in the Neuroamp division in R&D. Once you're done, meet me in my office. Be ready to discuss the details of your next assignment. Sure you're okay? You left pretty far. Double check those measurements are right. Anesthesia always makes I me nervous. Not permitted to perform medical practices Already checked them without four times. human oversight. Hey there. Ah, here's my lucky candidate. I hope you're ready to embark on one amazing journey. The internal neuroamp is basically the next leap in our line of influential amplifiers. It gives the user dominion over a less dominant target, meaning you can heavily influence another person's thoughts and actions. Technically, that remains to be seen. It's not not legal, but those decisions will be left up to a higher power who is neither you nor me. Oh yeah. It gives Ryujin Industries a huge advantage over the competition. So, are you ready to get started? Neurosurgery is my specialty. I've performed more operations than I can count on a wide variety of brains. So I like to think that I'm wildly overqualified. Really, I could do this in my sleep. Yes, I always love a willing subject. Now, just a few details before we begin. Obviously, we'll be putting you under. 
I'll be making a small incision in the back of your skull where the internal neuroamp will be fitted. The whole procedure should only take three to four hours with little to no downtime afterwards, provided DeMarcus got everything entered correctly. Did I not just say I quadruple check the numbers? You know I'm just giving you a hard time. Besides, I've got to make sure my patient is reassured. There's little to no risk, assuming your brain is typical and you don't have any adverse reaction to the anesthesia. First sign of trouble, we back out and start evaluating other candidates. Of course, we've got, what, five PhDs between the two of us? Six, but who's counting? All I'm saying is that you're in good hands. Now, just lie down on the table once you're ready, and we should be good to go. I hope you know what you're doing. I worry about you. Be safe. Let's get this party started. Well, well, look who's finally up. The operation was a success, obviously. Once you're able to refocus, let me know how you're doing. So, how are you feeling? You look good? Yep, that's me every morning. But the whole point of this is no visual indication and no adverse side effects. So, sounds like we're on track. Just a couple quick notes before using the internal neuroamp. First, you can only influence one person at a time. And second, the effect is temporary. So be prepared if you use it in a combat situation. Let's just say it varies based on the user. Some people have greater mental capabilities than others, which would increase the duration. Now that's something to talk to the drone engineers about. Now let's test this sucker out. Demarcus has graciously volunteered for science, he says. Our preliminary testing was rigorous enough that there's little to no risk involved here. The biggest unknown was finding the perfect compatible alloy for the implant. We've had the tech itself working externally for quite some time. Please, we're not infinity. We believe in due diligence when it comes to tech like this. But, just in case something does go wrong, we've got him locked up in the test chamber. Demarcus loves being hands-on and experiencing things on his own. It's probably why he's the second most published scientist here, after me. Just head up the stairs nearby to the observation deck. Warning, this unit does not possess advanced surgical capabilities. On the one hand, I'm fascinated by the incredible technology. On the other, 
I'm terrified what could happen should this fall into the wrong hands. I've never been so divided about something in all my life. Oh my god, that was incredible. What was it like? Wow. How to describe it? One minute I was excited about seeing how the experiment would go. The next, I had a brief moment of disorientation and figured I must have lost my train of thought. It felt eerily natural. And yes, I admit it, just as you predicted. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it! I can hardly wait to finish writing up my latest dissertation. And you owe me a hundred creds. I'll be keeping myself under constant surveillance now. I'm curious if any other side effects may manifest. We should have a talk, when you have the time, of course. So, tell me all about it. How did it feel? Any side effects? I'll take that as a no on the side effects, and that toy you love so much is very powerful. So use it wisely. Yeah, toy is hardly the word I'd use to describe it. It really was fascinating how all I experienced was a moment of disorientation. It's truly remarkable tech. Hmm. Not at all. But I can imagine if I experienced disorientation like that, but regained my awareness in another room. It could be a bit jarring. We'll definitely be running some more tests in the future, though. So many situations to account for. Those are the kind of edge cases that I let the board work out. Obviously, tech like this is going to come with its fair share of red tape. Maybe that's the beauty of it. You'd never know. Uh, besides, the Neuro Elm isn't total control. If a subject's morals or beliefs in something are strong enough, we still see points of failure. That being said, it's been interesting to discover the actions our subjects sanction in their own minds. Okay, okay. As much as I'd love to go over the details and potential of this amazing piece of technology I created, Masako wants to see you. It sounds like you have an assignment to complete. And Demarcus and I have a lot of notes to record. There's something I need to talk to you about. I can't believe Vina... I have an important personal decision to make. But I need to discuss something with you first. Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the Colony War broke out, I was posted as the Chief Navigator on a warship, the Dauntless. Then you were right. I didn't want to go into detail before because, well, just hear me out. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Aeta Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. We lost 12 ships that day. 12, including my own. No. This is important. I need to tell you this. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship, but I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. I believe you, but you haven't heard the worst of this. We fought for hours, but the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were spiraling helplessly 
towards the planet's surface. There was... <sighs> there was nothing I could do. It was my duty, as acting captain, to be the last person to leave the Dauntless. We had more than one escape shuttle available. So, I elected to wait until they were... safe. You're sorry. For me? If I hadn't been so stubborn, so eager to prove that I could handle command... <sighs> My crew would have had more time to escape. Try telling that to their loved ones. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal! I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. That's true, but still, it doesn't erase the real issue here. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator Corps going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. That's why I'm worried about us. After everything you've heard, all my stories, you still have faith. No one's ever cared about me this much. Not even Arja. You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about us, about our relationship, how we've clearly become close. I practiced what I was going to say when the moment was right, and now that it's here, my mind's gone blank. <laughs> uh, look, you deserve the best. Someone who can give themselves to you entirely. But right now, I have too much baggage. Too much on my mind. I hope you'll forgive me for pushing you away. I just need time. I'm on my 12th iteration of this design. I wasn't sure how accurate Vina's promise of no downtime was going to be. Let's just hope her promise of no brain damage holds true as well. Now that you've been outfitted with the internal neuroamp, it's time to put that tech to work. We're sending you into Infinity LTD. Lucas Drexler is about to learn exactly why you don't steal from Ryujin Industries. All right, Yuko has provided a layout of Infinity LTD. You have two options for this assignment. We'll be providing you with the means for both. Option A, you gain entry through their maintenance access on the roof. Option B, we give you an assigned identity and arrange a meeting for you. Option A, you need to remain under the radar the entire time. Option B, you have a slight cover that may give you the opportunity to talk your way to your objectives. Of course not. The meeting is just a legitimate way in. Once inside, you'll be led to a waiting room where your host will be running late. That's your opportunity to make your way to either the executive floor or R&D. Just hope those acting skills don't get you caught or killed. Now, depending on your preference, you'll either find yourself in the maintenance hallway or the marketing department. 
From there, you have three targets. First, you have Lucas Drexler's computer, located in his office on the executive floor. Second is Faye Sengsavan's computer, in research and development. And third, you need to obtain the prototype they are working on, also in R&D. As you can see, you've several floors to traverse. So I hope you're prepared for an adventure. You'll only have free range on the marketing floor. Infinity may be cheap, but they know at least some level of security is needed in this business. That's what we're counting on. Now, I had Ularu create a program that you need to run on both Lucas and Faye's computers. I'll let her explain the details. You see, once we expose Infinity LTD, all of their data is going to come under intense scrutiny. We only want the public to know about their mercenary hires and unauthorized human trials, but Project Dominion needs to remain confidential. I've created an overseer program that will gather all the evidence we need, and at the same time delete anything relating to Ryujin and the internal Nero Amp. Anyone who comes forward to defend Lucas would be prosecuted as either aiding or being an accessory to these crimes. They all know career suicide when they see it. As for Lucas himself, if he wants to speak up and add corporate theft to his laundry list of crimes, fine. But who's going to believe him? With tech like that, I can see why you'd want to maintain control of the narrative, though I strongly object to the methods. If the media were to draw their own conclusions, I'm certain they'd just create a panic among people. Controlling the narrative is of the utmost importance. Oh, let's just hope this program is as thorough as you say then. And as safe. Now, we don't want to mess on this one. A body count will only distract from what we're trying to accomplish here. In fact, unless they're a master at being one with the shadows, I'd suggest you leave your friend behind. Lower the risk. Simon Rychek provided some useful info on how to evacuate civilians from the building. I'm sure you remember him from Sidonia. Infinity's maintenance crew is understaffed. It's only a matter of time before pressure gauges go unchecked and they have a massive issue on their hands. Once that pressure becomes too much, Every floor in the building is going to suffer from gas leaks, setting off an automated alarm to evacuate the building. Simon was able to get a passcode for you to access their system's computer, so you can force the heating system to fail. I'm told security has masks to handle the situation, so the guards will still be stationed in the building. It's also possible they'll activate their building's defense system as well. You may run into a few automated turrets, so you'll still want to try and stay out of sight. If the information Simon provided is accurate, you can reach the control systems through a computer located in the maintenance area. It's a pretty convenient stop if you enter in through the roof access. That old man's going to be around for some time to come. Especially since I heard you helped him get rid of an old thorn in his side. We're also issuing you an operative suit. It should help reduce their ability to detect you. These suits are typically reserved for the senior ranks, but we want to reduce as much risk as possible. Please, you're an exception. But, we can talk promotion after you pull off this assignment. And that's what we're hoping for. If you can pull this off, even I'll be impressed. Once you've run the Overseer program and obtained the prototype, your final step is to deliver the slate to David Barron at the SSNN field office. If he asks questions, feel free to give him just enough information to pique his interest, but no mention of Ryujin or who you are. SSNN is used to anonymous tips, 
They'll do whatever verifications they deem necessary on their own to confirm the story. Ularu assured me it's safe. The Overseer program will purge itself once its primary function is complete. The only thing left on that slate will be proof of Infinity's crimes. It doesn't matter what he believes. David's first move will be to verify the information you provide. Once he receives confirmation, which he will, he'll see it as his duty to report the news. You and me both. So, any final questions before you go? You'll be restricted to the marketing floor. An appointment is not a free pass. You have the ability to manipulate others. If someone's in your way, you could get them to move. If someone has a key card, that means you have a key card. The possibilities here are really up to you. Depending on whether or not you evacuate the building, you'll mostly be looking at security guards, much like we have here. You may encounter an automated defense system in the form of turrets as well, so be careful. Good luck, and be sure to report directly back to me when you return. Here's Simon's passcode, your operative suit, the Overseer program, and your cover identity. Your cover ID card is encoded with roof entry and elevator access, so that's your ticket in either way. Don't screw this up. Skylar Lumen? to make a claim. It's one thing to hide your work in a network with thousands of employees, not to mention access to a top-secret project that can let you control said employees. It's another to try and hide on a single slate. So, let's take a look. Aha. The decryptions hit a snag. There's definitely something here. This is exactly what we needed. According to this code, Ularu intended to plant false evidence that would show Masako was working with Lucas. The moment you launched the Overseer program, a series of fabricated communication files would have been uploaded to the Infinity LTD network. One of them even frames Masako for encouraging Lucas to push for early human trials. First Imogene, now Masako. Ularu keeps using people as rungs on the way up the ladder. Any one of us could be next. I'm going to copy the necessary files off this slate and issue you a new one. I want to keep this one intact, so Ularu can't dispute it. All right. Now, we finally have the evidence we need to prove Ularu's guilt. Good. Then let's nail Ularu right to the wall. She deserves everything that's coming her way. There's no doubt. 
Should you have even noticed the upload, the program itself is designed to ignore any stop commands. It would have been too late. Yes. And had you not brought this program to me in the first place, you would have been the one planting the false evidence. Without that falsified evidence, Ularu is in for a big surprise. I fully expect she'll be eagerly awaiting SSNN's broadcast, anticipating Masako to be accused alongside Lucas Drexler. Here's the new slate with the revised Overseer program. Let's get this assignment finished the right way. Don't cause any trouble. Did you know I used to have an office near the top of Mast? Hmm. How far the mighty have fallen, eh? Unfortunately, I'm not authorized to make appointments myself. Hello. Did you have an appointment with us today? Ah, yes. From Lumen Interactive. The elevator here will take you to the marketing floor. Once you arrive, you'll want to talk to Ellis Ortiz. He's the receptionist there and will be happy to help you. <laughs> 